Hey there, everybody. It's almost the end of 2019. We've got the holidays in store and 2020 right in front of us. So today's podcast on But Seriously, we are going to be talking about a look back. So we're going to take a look at 2019, good, bad, and ugly, and we're going to go ahead and throw that all down on some notes and kind of really sink our teeth into it, figure out exactly what we did right, what we did wrong, how we're going to move forward into 2020 so that we can go ahead and create the legacy that we want. All right? Let's get to it. Okay, everybody ready? All right. So I've broken this down into four different segments. The segments are uh, peaks and valleys, feedback, people, and acknowledgement. Now, I've got my notes right here, and we'll just kind of take our time, go through this. I'll give you the first few questions and segment pieces, and then just hit pause and do the exercise I'll be here waiting for you, and then you can continue, all right? So this is an interactive exercise for you, and I guarantee you, at the end of it, it's going to be so incredibly insightful because, you know, life gets past us sometimes, and it's really difficult to kind of take a look back unless we make a concerted effort to do so. So I hope you enjoy this exercise. Here we go. So for the first section, I call it Peaks and Valleys. What I like to do with this section is kind of take a look at all the big highs and the big lows, right? This is where we learn the most about what we've done in the last year. So, first of all, I would like you to think about 2019, and I want you to only think about the things that you are very most proud of in 2019 for work and personal life, okay? Make two columns if you have to on your page, and just do a brain dump. Get it all out there, all on that piece of paper, all right? Go ahead and do that. All right, now once you've done that, I want you to kind of take a look at both sides of your list, personal and work, and I want you to circle the top five items that you are the very most proud of in all of those. So you should have 10 10 squigglies or underlines or circles or whatever on your page, five for each Uh, you you know, five for personal and five for work. And when you look at those items, this is going to take you a little bit of time. Now I want you to take each one of those items and I want you to just in two or three lines uh, go through and think about what it was that allowed you to accomplish those five things in your personal life and your work life? What were the things that motivated you the most? Uh, What were the things that you felt like you did best that got you to those accomplishments and goals? Okay? All right. Go ahead. It'll take you a few minutes. It's all right. All right. Now, I want you to do the exact same thing with your least finest moments of 2019, all right? Just do two columns, personal and work life, and do a brain dump. What were some of the worst lows of all of 2019? What are the things that are cringeworthy you don't even want to remember happened? You were most embarrassed about your behavior or you know, it, a major epic fail at work that you know you could have done better at, but uh, it just didn't work out the way you had planned. Do a brain dump. Do all of that. And then once you're done with that, let's do the same thing we did with our highs and go ahead and circle, but instead of five, Circle your top three items on your personal and your work life that you feel were just your biggest fails of the year, okay? So, the best thing about doing this exercise is that when we make mistakes and when we fall flat on our face, it is the best opportunity for us to really learn a little something about ourselves and move past it and figure out how we don't do that again, right? All right, so you've got this little, you've got three on each side, you've got personal and you've got work. Go ahead and start doing the same process you did with your highs. Take your first, second, and third of each part of your list and just tell yourself exactly what strengths and motivations you had that moved you through and forward past these particular fails in 2019. You know, these hardships, um, anything that happened personally that really had you down and just you felt as if you couldn't get back up. Well, clearly you did because here you are today. So 
Write down some of the things you learned that, about yourself that pushed you through. You know, was there someone in particular that was really a motivating factor in uh, you keeping your eye on the ball? Was there something that you had learned about yourself that you had as a strength that really made you just pick yourself up, dust your knees off, and get going? Write it all down for those six things, and I'll be right back with you. All right, we're not going to... We're not going to hang out in that space. Now we're going to move on to feedback. We're just going to think in overall general terms about your 2019, okay? Now, 2019, you probably had some goals that you had set for yourself, whether it had to do with health goals or achieving something at work, maybe a pay raise or a promotion or planning some big you know, thing at, uh, for the family that you know, was complicated, but you got it all together. So what were some of the things that worked in 2019 for you, either accomplishing you know, health goals or weight goals or healthy eating, or what were some of the things that didn't work, some of the things that you tried to implement in your life and you didn't necessarily feel like that was the best route in accomplishing some of those things? You know, these are, this is the time to just kind of do an overall general overview for what lessons you felt you learned in 2019 about yourself and the way that you do things and how, you know, how you do them and why you do them. It's a very broad question. Take it how you want it. Go ahead and write those things down. All right, next. Again, broad strokes in the feedback section. Nothing uh, too incredibly strenuous for you to think about, but if you look at 2019 as a whole, what caused you the most stress in 2019? So the reason why I ask this is because if you look back, is there something that you were doing in 2019 that caused you a lot of stress that you can avoid? Okay, uh, you know, if it was that you were a glutton for torturing yourself by putting yourself in a particular situation that really isn't the very best for you and really had a lot of negative impact as opposed to positive impact, can you get rid of that one thing? Um, is it perhaps something that you can do to change a particular behavior that causes that kind of stress? You know, So look at the way that you reacted to some things or reacted to um, you know, a particular type of situation maybe that kept occurring over and over, see if you can avoid it, or see if there's something that you can learn that will bring out a different reaction that isn't so stressful for you. Perhaps it's uh, learning a new way to cope with a particular situation that you can't avoid, that will come up again. So take a look at a few of those things, write them down. Let's see what you come back with. All right, I hope that you got some, some good insight there. This next section is all about people. Now, this is a difficult one for us because we come in contact with a variety of different people throughout our lives. Sometimes they are brand new people. Sometimes they're introduced from people that we already know. Sometimes they're relationships we cannot avoid, for instance, at work uh, or even family, right? So this is what I want you to take a look at. First, did you create any new relationships in 2019? And if you did, were they particularly outstanding and notable? Now, what I want you to write down is who it was and why it made such a positive impact on your life, okay? If you, if you want to, go through the description of exactly where you met this person and the whole story, because if you're like me, you like to look back at some of your, um, your year-end reviews or your notes or your journals um, in the future. So in order to jog your memory, just go ahead and write down a little description if that's what you'd like to do. But the most important part is if you met anybody that made a positive impact in your life, Write down who it was and why it was so positive, what the outcome of those positive, um, of that positive impact and what it was, okay? Go ahead. Next, I want you to think about your old relationships. Now, are any of your old relationships in need of a rethink? You know, sometimes we hold on to old relationships because they're comfortable or even if they're uncomfortable, just because they're familiar, 
right? That doesn't mean that they are always the best thing for us. I'm talking about relationships that are constant in your life um, that may need a reevaluation. Are there any relationships in your life with people that uh, perhaps don't really contribute anything positive to you any longer? Um, maybe they don't make you feel so good, or perhaps it's just not a good fit anymore. People grow, they turn into uh, different influences within their lives, and that's okay. But you don't have to force yourself necessarily to be in relationships. Relationships change. It's fine. Relationships move on. They grow. They die. Maybe it's time to take a look at some of those relationships that aren't necessarily impacting you in the very best way and see if you know, if it's something that you want to salvage or if not, if it's something that you need to move on from. Now, when you think of those relationships, write down why you feel you may need to move on from this relationship. You need to jog your, um, your memory banks on what it was that you started this relationship for or whether it was just forced upon you um, and whether it still is fulfilling you in the same way or if perhaps it no longer does any good or benefit for you or the person that you're in that relationship with, okay? Now, at the same time, life gets in the way of a lot of things. And sometimes we aren't the very best friend or best wife or parent or um, coworker. But that doesn't mean necessarily that you want to dump all your relationships. Sometimes it means that you've got to take a look at yourself and who you are and see, are there any relationships from 2019 that you really kind of neglected? Maybe you love this relationship and you need to just refocus in on it. So are there any of those relationships you need to evaluate? Do you need to maybe reevaluate yourself and how you've treated a relationship? Have you cared for some of these relationships that you really want to cherish still? Um, you know, have you really put the effort into the relationships you really don't want to lose and the ones that you know you want to continue? These are questions to ask yourself. And if so, you know, Go through that, think about it, and write some of that down. Check it out. I mean, do your own self-evaluation. Are you being the person in a relationship that you want to be? All right, and here's the last section. This one, I really want you to think hard about. It's not a tough section. It's just, this is a really important process to go through. I want you to look back through 2019 and pick out the top three things you are most grateful for. I, why would I say this? Because life is so fast, it moves on. Look, I swear we were just in January of 2019 and it's already upon us. 2020, this year has flown by. Some points were a little bit slow, but in general, it's already here. We're at the end. This is the year-end review. So what is it in 2019 that you are super grateful for and you just don't know what you would have done without those top three things? I want you to write that stuff down. I want you to be joyous about it. I want you to make sure that you put in descriptions. This should be a long section for you for each of these points, and I want you to figure out why it is that it made such a big impact on you. You and for being this grateful that you need to write it down on your year-end review. Okay, go. You've done all this work. You've gone through the process of kind of taking a look at it. I want you to put this away. Just put this away for a little while. Don't think about it. I want you to put it away for a few days. And then I want you to reread it. And I want you to do it in a quiet place. Sit down, absorb it all, and then I want you to open another page, a nice, fresh, clean sheet. And looking at all the things that you did as far as your feedback and your review for 2019, I want you to write down what you want in each one of those segments for 2020. What are the things that you want to change what are the things that you would like to improve? How would you like more of some of the joy of the grateful list that you have? What are some of the things that you feel you really need to 
sit down and and talk about with the person perhaps that is on one of your most stressful lists? Are there people that you need to talk to and really either apologize to or maybe depart from? I want you to put that plan in place. That's what I want you to do in a few days. Don't do this now. Just sit down with yourself, read through it, and start writing a 2020 plan. Things that you can work on, things that you can do that will avoid some of your pitfalls from 2019 and make your 2020 phenomenal, okay? Everybody deserves to have a plan in place so that you can be happy and thrive in 2020. This is not about trying to beat yourself up over 2019. It's about learning from 2019 and moving forward, knowing what you did right in 2019 and continuing it in 2020. That's what this exercise is about. I hope you got a whole lot from this, and I hope that this is something that you do every year. It's a fantastic exercise. I love doing it. Yes, it takes a lot of time, especially when December is so busy with holidays and work and wrap up everything. I get it. It is tough, but it's so, so important, especially if you want to go into the new year feeling refreshed and a person with a plan. Go ahead and tag me at Marie Daniels. I'd love to hear whatever it is that you found were your best lessons of 2019. Thank you so much for joining me on the But Seriously podcast and my channel. I really hope that you enjoyed the segment today and we'll do it again next week. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you like, go ahead and hit my email list link down in the bottom of the show notes. You will get some really great, fabulous stuff. No more than one or two emails in a month, but we'll have some freebies and we'll have some little nuggets of wisdom in there for you, just like each show. So join me next week and I'll see you here.